Hi, my name is Javier Cano Cano. I'm software engineer at Red Hat, and today I'm presenting ensuring high availability for Qbert virtual machines. This is the agenda we are going to follow throughout this presentation, and first of all, an introduction. Kubernetes node may become unhealthy at any given time, and the reasons leading to a node failure may vary. Some workloads might require at most one semantics to avoid data corruption and recover the node and the workloads running on the affected node. There are three main actions uh, required to be done. First of all, detecting the node failure, then reach the node to a safe state known as fencing, recover the node and the workloads uh, known as remediation. No health checks, NHC is an operator provided by Red Hat, which has the mission to restore nodes if they become unresponsive. This is that the node can no longer run any workloads. And for this purpose, NHC uh, provides a mechanism to detect when the node is considered unhealthy and a remediation uh, remediator to recover the node. NHC monitors the node state reported state. And if at some point the node state is in a given state, for a given period of time, then the node is considered unhealthy. Then uh, NHC will trigger, trigger the remediation actions to heal the node and the workloads. Remediators are in charge of fixing the condition that has led to the node to be unhealthy. And the main action taken for, uh, for the remediation the remediators are to reboot the node. There are multiple remediators, but we can highlight self-node remediation known as SNR. This is the most generic one, does not require any specific configuration, API, or hardware support. And fence agent remediation, known as FAR. It is based on fate agents, and this uh, remediator uh, requires some specific configuration. For instance, if we are deploying, we deploy our cluster in bare metal, uh, it will require to configure the IPMI fence agent. Let's see how NHC and the remediators work all together. First of all, we need the node uh, control plane report state. This state is um, reported by the control plane itself, and it relies on, a, on an agent uh, that lives inside its Kubernetes node called Kubelet. Kubelet sends proofs every given period of time uh, reporting that he is alive, that node is uh, up and running. And if those uh, proofs are not collected for a given period of time, then the control plane updates the node's uh, state. Then if this node uh, condition is kept for a given period of time, node health checks consider the node as unhealthy and trigger the remediation, uh, uh, remediation agents. First of all, the remediator uh, isolates uh, or fence the node by rebooting it, uh, rebooting it and then removes uh, all the affected workloads in order to be uh, rescheduled again. Let's see how we can deploy an HCE on a Kubernetes cluster. First of all, we need to go to Operator Hub, install, uh, install OLM, Patch the operator's namespace to be privileged. This might not be required in some Kubernetes clusters, but in Kubernetes CI, it is required. Then we need to install, to install uh, the operator wait until this is deployed and configure the uh, NHC itself. Let's highlight some sections here. First of all, in this section, we specify the remediator we want to use, in this case, uh, NHC, SNR, sorry and the unhealthy conditions. This is the conditions that tells the tells NHC when an node is considered unhealthy. Let's see how these uh, configuration fields affect to the previous uh, timeline. The unhealthy duration, the duration impacts uh, the amount of time required to an node to uh, be considered unhealthy. The remediator use, in this case, an SNR, in past impact the amount of time required to fence and remediate the host, which is those sections. And the final section re uh, relies on Kubernetes itself and Kubert. Now we are going to show you an experimentation methodology used uh, developed in this work to analyze these remediators. 
the, this experiment experimentation methodology is designed to help users and developers to identify, identify areas where the VM recovery time can be improved. Also, it can help to compare, to compare different strategies, remediators, etc. We could just measure the total VM recovery time, will be the difference between the timestamp where the action that will lead the node to being healthy happen, and the timestamp where the VM is up and running once again. However, this will not give us any insight about, about what's going on and possible improvement areas. So we will break down the recovery time in the different stage phase. We start in a situation where we have a VM up and running, uh, ready, reporting ready equal true, uh, it's healthy, it's running. And we take the first uh, measurement here, the first timestamp measurement here in the situation where we intentionally measure up the node to create uh, an unhealthy node. This is done by just stopping the kubelet service agent which is in charge of reporting uh, that the node is up and running. So we wait until the VM is on not ready state and measure the difference between this timestamp and this one, which give us the VM not ready time. Then uh, QBIR uh, VMs lies inside pods called launcher pods. And this spot eventually will transition to term a terminating state, which will give us the launcher terminating uh, period. Then eventually the launcher pod is deleted, which gives give us the launcher deleted uh, time. And the launcher pod eventually again is respawn, which gives us the launcher respawn time. Finally, the VM uh, is up and running once again and we measured the VM ready time again. We need to use the running strategy always or a run and failure for this to work. This is the same algorithm as writing down in, in text. And in the next in the next sections, we are going to explore how uh, we have used this configuration methodology to improve the VM recovery times. First of all, we will establish a baseline scenario in which we have a scenario with an unhealthy duration of one second in a plain QVCI cluster with two nodes, and we have and we run the 31 experiments to get a, mean, a meaningful measurement. In this plot, in the horizontal axis, we can see the configuration used, and in the vertical axis, we can see the VM recovery time measured in seconds. This plot, in this plot, we can uh, realize that most of the time used is uh, spent to respond the launcher, the, the launcher pod, meaning that the most of, uh, almost the fifty-one percent of the time is spent here. So let's see, let's see how we can fix this. Uh, Cubit will try to recreate any VM with a running strategy set to always or a run on fi a failure. If the VM status is, is fail, uh, it will recreate the, the, the VM. Moreover, we know that at some point the VM is on running state, but it does not have any launcher pods. In short, we have a VM on running state, but without launcher pods. In a normal scenario, a scenario, this will lead to move the VM to a failed state. However, the VM stays in this state for more than 100 seconds. Again, in a normal scenario, the VM handler is in charge of uh, changing this status, as we can see here. However, the issue is that its VM handler is responsive, responsible for the VM's schedule on its node. This means that if a node becomes unhealthy, not only the VM will be unresponsive, but also the build handler. We, so, we observe that the VM recovery time is as fast as the build handler respond time of five minutes in the worst case. This is because when the build handler is recreated, it realizes that it has VMs without launcher pods or the node time out, times out and the uh, VM status is updated to failed. We need a way to short circuit this situation to reduce the VM recovery time, specifically reducing the launcher respawn time. And this is exactly what we did. In this case, we uh, modify the build controller watcher, and if 
we detect a VM that is running, but it does not have any pot launcher pods, we update the status to fail, allowing the responsible controller to respond the VM, to recreate the VM, sorry. Let's explore how uh, this affects to the final result. We repeat the same experiment, but now with uh, the fix on it. And we can see here the result before before the, fi the fix and after fi the fix. As we can see, the launcher uh, response time is drastically reduced and then therefore reducing the, the total VM response time, uh, VM uh, recovery time. And we can identify other uh, improvement areas. For instance, the VM deleted, deleted time or launcher uh, delete time can be improved by using another uh, remediator, for instance, FAR. And in the case of the VM not ready time, or uh, this is a fixed timeout and there is not much we can do here. Finally, some conclusions. NHC helps to create high availability on Kubert VMs. Some experimentation methodology helps to identify, identify issues in the final uh, recovery time. The fix is able to speed up the recovery time by a 55%. And we have addressed the main source of delay, which is the uh, launcher response time. This is it. Thanks for listening.